Remember, while you're listening, write your answers on the question. Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode in our educational channel. Today our lesson is for grade 9. Today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic which is a very important skill. It is reading comprehension and today I'm going to give you more strategies and more tips on how to handle this skill. To find out more about all of this stay tuned because we're going to be back after a short break. Remember, while you're listening, write your answers on the question. Hello again. As I said before the break that our episode is for grade 9, and we're going to cover a very important skill, which is reading comprehension. So first, as I said, it is a reading comprehension, but first let's have a look at our outcome for this episode. Let's read them together. By the end of this episode, you will be able to, number one, read a passage for specific information. Second, read a passage for detailed information. I know that some of you have some problems with this skill, but now I will help you to make it easier for you. But my question now, do you know the shapes or the types of uh, reading comprehension passages that you may uh, see in the exams or in any uh, book that you may read? We have different types, like this one. Can you try to guess what is this type? Look at this picture. Do you need help? Okay, here it's written, hi, Steve, and it is ended with regards or we can end it with best wishes. So which type of reading comprehension this, uh, this passage is? It is email. Wonderful. So you might read an email. What else? Try to guess. Hmm. Do you need uh, another picture? Okay. Let's look at this picture. What can you see? Shall I read something for you? Okay, here's written. Reservation clerk and Mary Jones. So here you see what? You see two people are talking. Conversation between two people. What do we call it? Yes, we call it a dialogue. Wonderful. So this is another type of reading comprehension. What else? Hmm? Think hard. Okay, let's go to the third picture. Hmm? What can you see here? You see here? two letters. So the other type is what? Letter. So you, may, you might read a letter which is one type of reading comprehension. Also we have a lot. We have a lot. Here. What do we call them? Do you need help? I'll read the, uh, the first one with the red car. It's written, one day when Jacob got up he went to his mother. So this, what do, what do we call it? It is what? Short story. And today we are going to cover a short story. By the way, reading short story is one of my favorite type of reading comprehension. Now we are left with what? Yes. What is this? A newspaper. You may come across reading what? A newspaper article. Wonderful. And what do you think is the last one? Hmm. Sometimes in newspaper you might find what? You might find, uh, who wants to read it? An advertisement, yes. So ads is one of the types of reading comprehension. Wonderful. Now, dear students, I'm very sure that many of you want to know the types of questions that may come across them when they handle a reading comprehension. Can you try to guess? Do you need help? I'll give you the first one. So what's the first type? Which is MC questions. Choose the right answer from A, B, C, and D. But what are exactly the types of questions inside them? Mm. 
They could be what? Reference words, yes. This pronoun, what does it refer to? Wonderful. Or word meanings, tell me the meaning about a certain word. Also, we might uh, come across main idea. And please pay attention, the main idea is for which paragraph? Paragraph one or two, so please pay attention at that. Now we might have another type of questions, which is productive questions. Answer the following questions. And dear students, when you want to answer those questions, please, you have to refer back to the reading comprehension itself. Now I'm going to give you some tips for reading comprehension, and those tips are going to make the reading easier for you. So what are the tips? Important tips for reading comprehension. Okay, number one, focus on the opening and closing sentences of the passage. Do you know why you have to focus at those two things? Because sometimes you can know the main idea from the opening and from the closing. Okay, second, don't stop at each unfamiliar word. Sometimes you have to guess the meaning. Don't use your dictionary for each single word, no. Try to guess through the sentence or through the context. Number three, really understand what the question is about. Don't rush. Try to read it carefully and go through the question before answering it. So try what? To understand it. Number four, for MC questions, which is choose the correct answer, consider each choice separately. So which means try to decide well for the choices. Okay, for number five, underline and take notes as you read. So sometimes if you don't know the meaning of a certain word, don't rush and use your dictionary. Just be calm and try to guess the meaning through the context, okay? But first try to underline it. And if you have some notes about the passage itself, just take notes and write them down. Number six, don't copy too many sentences in an answer to a question. Be specific. Some students, they write a whole paragraph. No. What is the question is asking? Then just give us the direct answer using a full sentence. But don't copy everything. Sometimes you have to do some changes. Okay. Now, dear students, I'm going to give you some strategies, okay, to make the reading again easier so strategies used by good readers and I want you to be at the end of this episode what a good reader the first strategy make connections we can make connections in many things for example when you want to answer reference words I mean that if you want to know uh, the pronoun here you have to make connections between the pronoun and what does it refer to okay also think about what's important, especially when you try to choose a suitable title. And sometimes also this way is needed when you want to decide a suitable uh, main idea. So what again? Think about what's important. And number three, what is it? Make predictions. Yes, how can you do that? Sometimes when you read Try to expect what is going to happen next. This is a very good skill if you're going to master it. Number four, summarize. What do I mean by summarize here? I mean it for reading comprehension. Sometimes when you want to answer something, don't copy the whole sentence. No, just summarize your answer. Just make it direct and try to use full answer or full sentence. Wonderful. Now, the last one, which is be a problem solver. Sometimes the answer is not written in the reading comprehension. So here you, you're going to try to solve the problem in front of you. Also you're going to try to do what? To make connections in order to get the solution for the problem. Yes, wonderful now. Now dear students, I know that many of you want to know what's our topic, okay? But first, who can read this word, what is it? It is holiday, yes. Do you enjoy uh, having holidays? Definitely. Can you tell me, what do you do in a holiday? 
I know that many of you do a lot of things. Just give me one thing. Yes, some, uh, some people stay in their country. Wonderful. What else? Some people, what do they do? They join a sport club. Mm -hmm. And what else? Some people travel. Yes, correct. Some people travel to different places. One of the places that you can travel to is, hmm, can you try to guess which country? It is United Kingdom. Yes, but exactly. In this picture, the, the first one, which city I'm talking about? It is a city start with letter L. It is London, yes. When you go to London and you want to enjoy the different places there, you can use what? Different means of transport. One of them is using cars or taxis. Also, you can use the bus or you can go to Oxford Circus Station. But what is it exactly? Do you know? Let's have a look at this station from the inside. Here, what can you see? What do, you go, what do we call that one? We call it the underground, yes. So this station is in London and it has an underground. Yes, let's have a look again at the outside. There you can see Oxford Circus Station and here you can see the people outside. What do you think? Are there many people outside? Yes, you can see too many people. At this time, we call it what? Rush hour. We call it rush hour. What does it mean, rush hour? It means too crowded. So, dear students, rush hour and underground are one of the vocabulary that you might see it difficult for you. Okay, so let's read it again. Rush hour. Now, it's the time to, to read. Are you ready to read with me? Wonderful. But before, before reading, I'm going to give you a question because I want to make sure that you are following with me. Okay? So, the first question is, choose the right answer from A, B, C, and D. Number one, the suitable title for the text could be. So, A, traveling abroad. B, London. C, a fun surprise. And the last choice, Oxford Circus. Now, are you ready to read? Okay, let's read together. I don't know if you have been to London. If you have, you've probably traveled in the rush hour. And you've probably been to Oxford Circus. During the rush hour there, the queue for the underground stretches for a hundred yards. A few weeks ago, I went to the cinema near Oxford Circus. I came out at about 8 o'clock and walked towards the tube station. To my surprise, I saw a queue nearly as long as you usually see in the rush hour. I joined it to work out why there were so many people. I waited for about 10 minutes until we started to move forward. When I was at the front of the queue, I took my purse out and stepped inside. It was only when it was my turn that I realized that I wasn't in the tube station at all. I was in another cinema, next door to the entrance to the station. I would have felt so embarrassed if I hadn't bought a ticket. So I checked what the film was. Luckily, I hadn't seen it before. Now, let's return to the question. Do you remember it? It was about a suitable title, yes. So, let's choose the correct answer. The suitable title for the text could be, let's read the choices again. Traveling abroad, B, London, C, a fun surprise, D, Oxford Circus. Let's go through the choices. Okay, have we, for A, have we talked about traveling abroad? No, so it's not correct. What about London? Do you think that London is 
uh, the suitable title for the, t uh, for the passage was the whole passage talking about the city, which is London? No, so it is incorrect. What about C and D? Which one do you think? I won't help you now. I only, ga no, I only gave you two choices. What do you think? C or D? Let's find out. It is wonderful. It is a fun surprise. Excellent. Number two, the word Q in line four means. So here, I'm going to ask about what? Word meaning. What are the choices? A, London. B, the rush hour. C, Oxford Circus. D, a line of people. Dear students, for this type of questions, what shall you do? You have to refer back to the paragraph itself. So here, this is the paragraph. You can see the paragraph. Then next, you should do what? You should read the sentence carefully in order to guess the meaning. So we're going to read the sentence, which is the last two paragraphs. During the rush hour, there, the queue for the underground stretches for a hundred yards. What do you think? Hmm. Look at it again. Can you try to guess? Do you need help? Okay, I'll show you a picture to help you. So, what do you think after looking at this picture it is? Correct, D, a line of people. Wonderful. Now, let's go to the third question. The pronoun it and the last line refers to. So here the question is about pronouns, word, reference, okay? Let's read the choices. A, door, B, the film, C, the station, and the last choice is a ticket. Again, for this type of question, what, have you, uh, what should you do? You should refer back to the paragraph itself. So let's go to the paragraph, okay. Uh, at the last, at the last um, line, you can see the pronoun it. If you want to answer it, okay, you have to go back to the uh, sentences written before it, okay? So let's go back to the sentence written before it. I would have felt so embarrassed if I hadn't bought a ticket. So I checked what the film was. Mm-hmm. So it. Luckily, I hadn't seen it. What do you think? It refers to what? Hmm. So, let's look at the choices again. It refers to... Do you need help? Okay. I'll show you a picture for more help. So, the answer is... Yes, B. It is the film. Wonderful. Now, dear students, we're going to have... Another type of questions, which is what? Let's read it together. Answer the following questions, productive questions. Number one, what means of transport can you take at the tube station? Again, what means of transport can you take at the tube station? For this type of questions, you have to refer back to the passage itself, okay? So, I already helped you and I, uh, here you can see that the answer is in the first paragraph, okay? So, look at it carefully. Can you try to guess what is the right answer? What do you think? Hmm. Look at it. Yes, so the right answer, there, the queue for the underground stretches for 100 yards. But can you uh, say it in a very simple word or a simple sentence? Okay. It is what? It is going to be, okay. I can take the underground, okay. So I changed the sentence, but it is the same answer, but I made, uh, and I made it more easier. Okay. Now, for question number five, why did the man take his purse out? But first, I know some of you don't know the meaning of purse. Do you need a picture for help? Definitely. Here is the picture. So let's go back to the reading passage again to try to answer this one. Here you can see the answer. Look at it carefully. Hmm. So what is the right answer? Do you need more help? Okay. 
I took my purse out and stepped inside. Try to use your common sense. Why did the man take his purse? Why? Certain that he took it out and stepped inside. For what? To pay some money. So the right answer is, what is it? The right answer, he took it out to pay for the ticket. Yes, wonderful. Now let's go to question number six. What is it? When did the man go to the cinema? When did the man go to the cinema? Here, for this kind of question, you have to scan the passage. You have to read it carefully to look for details. Okay, let's go to the passage. Okay, the answer is in the second paragraph. The answer is here. Look at it. So, when did the man go to the cinema? Have you, uh, have you found the answer? Yes, the answer is a few weeks ago I went to the cinema. But how can we write it? How can we write it? It's going to be he went there a few weeks ago. Dear students, pay attention. Here in this sentence I didn't copy it. I made some changes. Like what? I wrote he. I didn't write I. Do you know why? Because I'm talking about what? I'm talking about the writer. I'm not talking about myself. With this question, dear students, we have come to the end of our episode. In our episode today, I talked about a very important skill, which is reading comprehension. If you want to master this skill, you have to read a lot. If you want to be a good, uh, a good reader. Also today, I gave you some tips and some strategies for reading comprehension. Until we see you, take care and goodbye. Remember, while you're listening, write your answers on the questions.